Constanza Cerruti, a name that echoes among the towering peaks and icy summits of the highest mountains in the world. This undeterred high-altitude archaeologist didn't just climb thousands of feet into the thin air, she dug deep into our ancient past, unearthing secrets that lay sleeping in the frosty heights. From Egypt to the Himalayas, Peru to Greenland, Sarudi has left her footprints and break time us, a mark that is undeniable. Overcoming the biting winds of misogyny, Sarudi powered through, scaling her career as adeptly as she scaled those jagged cliffs. In conditions that would make a seasoned mountaineer's heart palpitate, she carried on her archaeological work, often alone, against the backdrop of the ever-changing canvas of the sky. And oh, the rewards she reaped, the stories she uncovered, the cultures she connected. But what makes Cerruti's story truly exceptional is not just her discoveries, but her tenacity in the face of adversity, and a particular find that stands out among all others. Ah, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. You'll find out what that is soon enough. Hey there, curiosity explorers. Ready for another dive into the unknown? I'm Caesar, your trusted guide in this journey of fascinating tales and mind-boggling mysteries. And I'm Sonia, excited to join you in today's exploration. I'm eager to take a sneak peek into the life of a woman who scaled not just mountains, but also the walls of a male-dominated field. That's right, Sonia. But before we start, don't forget to subscribe to the Curiosity Wonderland, throw in your comments, and share our adventures with friends. Your engagement fuels our journey. Buckle up, folks. Prepare for a thrilling ascent into the life of Constanza Cerruti. So picture this. The year is 1998, and standing on Mount Misty, a 19,101-foot-tall active volcano in Peru, is an archaeologist named Constanza Cerruti. She's here to unravel the mysteries of an ancient Inca sacrificial ritual site known as a Capacocha. Hold on, a capacocha, you said? Yes, a capacocha. This is a site where Incas performed sacred ceremonies and made offerings to the gods. The team found ceramic pottery, small figurines, and burial sites, all of which were incredibly preserved. Wow, that's incredible. So she was on a volcano, braving the harsh sun, high winds, and the lack of oxygen, uncovering these fascinating pieces of history? Exactly. And that experience really set the tone for Sarudi's future. After Mount Misty, she climbed even higher, conducting several excavations above 19,500 feet. One of the few women in this male-dominated field, she's made significant contributions to high-altitude archaeology. And she's not just digging up artifacts, right? No, she isn't. Sarudi connects these artifacts to the larger story of these ancient cultures. Unfortunately, many of these sites face threats from looters and the effects of climate change. So her work is a race against time in a way. Indeed it is. And despite the challenges, Sarudi finds her work extremely rewarding. Her unique approach to archaeology has opened new paths in the field, and her discoveries have shed light on cultures long gone. So Sarudi's journey in high-altitude archaeology hasn't been without challenges. In the early days of her career, her contributions were often overlooked. Despite co-directing archaeological work above 21,000 feet, her photographs were left out of a prominent publication highlighting the project. But that did not deter her. She just kept climbing, literally and figuratively. So she just started climbing mountains after she graduated. Yes, she did. One of her first notable ascents was Mount Chusha in northern Argentina, a towering 18,000 feet tall. She trekked through steep, snow-covered slopes and somehow, she felt fine physically. It was as if she was built for high altitudes. But I imagine high-altitude archaeology isn't all that simple, right? Absolutely not. The weather conditions can be unpredictable, with clear skies one minute and a snowstorm the next. Add to that the thin air, low pressure, and the physical strain of carrying food and instruments up and down the slopes. To top it all off, Sarudi often had to sleep alone in a personal tent in freezing temperatures, while her male counterparts could share larger tents to generate more body heat. It's truly inspiring how Saruti faced and overcame these obstacles, don't you think, listeners? What would you do if you found yourself in her shoes? How would you tackle such challenges? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget, 
If you're enjoying these discoveries as much as we are, hit that like button. And Saruti's work didn't stop there. In 1999, she co-discovered three incredibly well-preserved Inca mummies, known as the Children of Lulailaco. Children of Lulailaco. That sounds fascinating. Tell us more. Well, these mummies were found on the 22,200 feet tall Mount Lulailaco. The dormant volcano straddles the border between Argentina and Chile. It was an untouched Inca sanctuary used for religious purposes and had been left untouched for over 500 years. 500 years? And the bodies were still preserved? Yes, thanks to the permanent ice field, extreme cold, low humidity, and lack of microorganisms, these mummies were incredibly well preserved. They're the best preserved mummies ever uncovered by archeologists. Wow, that's remarkable. It certainly is. And you know, despite the harsh conditions and physical demands of her job, Sharudi says it's all worth it. She even believes that her Andean descent helps her adapt to high altitudes more easily. And she spends a lot of time at high altitudes, doesn't she? She does. She lives in Salta, a city that sits at 3,780 feet above sea level and regularly climbs its steep hills. She also walks about 10 miles a day when in Buenos Aires. So yes, she spends a significant amount of her time at high altitudes. The preservation of the mummies Chiruti discovered was nothing short of remarkable. Organs were virtually intact and skin, hair, and clothing were almost perfectly preserved. When they were found, they looked as if they were asleep. That's just incredible. They must have been astounded by that find. Indeed, they were. And the excavation process was surprisingly straightforward because volcanic ashes surrounded the mummies. The local mountain guides, who Saruti acknowledged as the strongest members of their team, had to carry the mummified bundles on their backs to the mountain's base. From there, they were transported to the Museum of High Mountain Archaeology for further study. Wow. That's quite a journey, and Sharuti has had her own journey, hasn't she? She certainly has. Despite facing skepticism and difficulties due to being a woman in a field dominated by men, she persevered. She's written numerous books, contributed to almost 200 scientific journals, and received numerous awards for her archaeological contributions. Including the Gold Condor Award, if I remember correctly? Yes, indeed. The first Argentine woman to ever receive this honor. But interestingly, while general archaeology has seen a shift with more women leading the way, Sarudi says that high-altitude archaeology still presents significant hurdles for women. This includes securing funding and garnering recognition for their findings. It sounds like she's making great strides in changing that narrative, though. She absolutely is. And it's not just about making a name for herself. It's about paving the way for future women in the field and proving that they can excel in this challenging and demanding profession. Despite the challenges and sometimes harsh treatment she's faced in her field, Saruti has continued to make significant strides in high-altitude archaeology. And she's part of the Society of Women Geographers, right? Yes, she joined in 2012, alongside other pioneering women like American marine biologist Sylvia Earle and German-British author Andrea Wolf. The Society, which will celebrate its 100th anniversary in 2025, is a global community of women who've made significant contributions to geographical exploration and research. What an incredible group to be part of. It truly is. And while recognition is important, what really stands out is the work these women do to uncover and understand our world. So what's next for Saruti? Well, after over 25 years of surveying mountaintop shrines, her interests have shifted towards cultural anthropology. She's now studying the symbolic aspects of mountains, including the myths, legends, pilgrimages, and rituals tied to them. So no more climbing? Oh, I wouldn't say that. In fact, Saruti herself said, the mountains are always calling me. So I think we can expect to see her continue to explore and uncover the secrets of the mountains for many years to come. So to recap, Constanza Sharudi, a pioneer among women in high-altitude archaeology, made her mark by scaling towering peaks and uncovering the secrets of ancient societies. Despite facing challenges early in her career, she didn't let that deter her from unveiling the mysteries of the mountains, such as the exquisite Inca mummies found on Mount Lualaco. 
Saruti's journey shows us that no peak is too high to conquer. And to our listeners, if you've enjoyed this journey through the heights of high altitude archaeology, please smash that like button, leave a comment, and share this episode with your friends. Your support helps us continue to uncover fascinating stories like Constanza Ciruti's. Thanks for joining us on this high altitude adventure. Remember, like Saruti, if the mountains are calling you, don't be afraid to answer. Couldn't have said it better myself. Until next time, from all of us here at Curiosity Wonderland, stay curious and keep exploring. Goodbye. I found this fascinating story on the Atlas Obscura site in an article titled In High Altitude Archaeology, One Woman Isn't Scared of Heights or Mummies, written by Laura Keneary and published on February 2nd, 2024. The full URL is in the video description if you'd like to learn more about Constanza Cerruti's high-altitude adventures. Now I'm off!